It's dead. It's done its last little bit. There was... Hello viewers and welcome back with the trusty old workshop. She's back. She's back. Tool tear down time. I know this is another Einhell video. We did one not so long ago about the circular saw, the brushless circular saw. If you want to check it out, I'll put the uh, thingy up there. This one, unplanned, but I thought we'll, uh, we'll have to do it because uh, the smoke is coming out. Um, let me show you. So I was using this the other day to cut a hole in the side of the house to add a window. Now we live in a wooden structure. Um, and this thing is rated for a hundred uh, millimeters of wood as in the depth of wood that you can cut with this and it's smoke start coming out and you can see it's dead it's done its last little bit there was sparks and now it's dead people it's a shame I haven't got the smoke for you but Ooh, the smell! So yeah, I thought we'll have to have a look inside this to see what went wrong because this is my first and only Einhell product that let me down. So this thing is only about six months old. I did use it. I mean, you can see that it, it's been through some battles. It, the, the rubber overmolding has come loose. But, you know, if you cut close to, a, to an object here, you tend to hold it against it for a little bit of extra support. I'm going to loose inside by the sounds of things. Um, so this is the brushed version. So this is the first alteration of this saw that they did. They now recently introduced, I think this summer, they introduced a brushless version, which is slightly more powerful because of the brushless motor. It comes with a little uh, vibration dampener in the handle. It's got that little rubber thingy. Um, it's got a swivel option, which this one has not got. So yeah, this is the um, the slightly cheaper version. This currently sales on Amazon for fifty nine ninety eight. I'll put the euros and dollars down below. So to be precise, this is the Einhell TEAP eighteen lithium. So this is again the brushed version of the universal saw, as they like to call it. Right, before we take it apart, as per usual, let's have a look at the features and functions. So it's a very simple saw. It's got a safety switch, so you can't pull the trigger. I mean, it's got a moving blade at the end of this, so when you grab it like this, obviously you don't want, when people have their hands in the way, you don't want things to get damaged and bloody. So safety switch, it's a two-way switch, so either this way, or the other way and then you can pull the trigger so both for left-handed and right-handed people ideal it's a one-speed saw really well you can modulate it a little bit with the switch but you want to give it full power pretty much all the time anyway using this device uh, you got the lock and unlock switch so unlock and lock on this side so the lock is always proud so when you use it the idea is that you can feel with your finger if it's not locked in place and then you can uh, lock it sometimes I do find myself holding it a little bit different depending on how you cut if you make horizontal cuts so this saw can't swivel like the brushless version of Einhell um, so you always have to hold it in the direction you're cutting like differently so sometimes I do find myself when I'm gripping the saw that I un unintentionally press the unlock button which means this thing starts to rattle loose and come out and make a horrible noise so that's something that you want to be mindful of using this um, this has the option of being sort of Extendable, but yeah, it doesn't really lock into place other than the fully retracted. Oh, there we go. I did have some issues with this. They wouldn't lock in place other than the fully inwards. Um, but at the four settings that you can see here, only the one at the ends work. The two in the middle, they don't for some reason. 
so it's yeah the idea is that you have an adjustable slider so when you're cutting you can use that to rest it against the object but obviously if it doesn't lock in place where you want it then it's a bit useless and you can see as well that because it's been rattling loose sometimes the paint's come off I mean on here it's expected because when you're cutting along you use this as a guide so this is always in touch with the object that you're cutting along or in um, you can adjust the angle somewhat it's a bit stiff but it allows you for a bit of an angle adjustment yeah you can have it off as well if you want maximum flexibility of the saw you can just leave it out that's the whole idea of it and then you have a toolless uh, saw blade change option so you don't need spanners or so to get the blade out all you do is grab the end there and twist it and the blade comes out it's just a little spring loaded system so you can just um, put the blade back in it and off you go it's fail safe as well so you can't put the blade no. you can put the blade in the wrong way around as well if that's something you like doing I've never really used a saw that way around but yeah it's um, uh, one thing to be mindful of if you do a lot of cutting and you your saw blades blunt so you want to swap it out for a new one this thing gets really hot because it's all connected to the drive system so wear a pair of gloves if you want to change the blade when you're using the saw another thing to be mindful of when plugging in the battery it's not always um, you know you have to be really make sure that the battery is fully in I had it a few times when using the saw and there's lots of vibrations um, that this comes out slightly and you think it's not working but the battery is actually disconnected so yeah just make sure you put it in properly before using it the saw blade that comes with the saw is a bit rubbish I don't have it anymore I threw it out um, you know, after two cuts of some soft timber that blade was pretty much knackered already so get some higher end blades with the right blades it's a pretty good saw with some blunt blades it struggles quite badly um, funny enough so yeah um, word of advice just get your hands on some good blades and you'll have loads of fun with this toy anyway enough said let's find out why she went up in smoke let's take the battery off first because the batteries are uh, and you know it's not that I'm cheating you with a dead battery the battery is definitely charged I was hoping that it would still pull the smoke out because of for dramatic effect on video but unfortunately that didn't happen it was just a little flash and that was the end of it so whoops lots of little um, Phillip head screws so let's take the trusty old impact driver out and take it apart I just bought some cheap work pro blades of Amazon um, for demolition purposes because that's the end of the day that's what we're doing I mean is so yeah nothing nothing special there um, but yeah the structure I was cutting was only about 70 mil thick wood and um, I mean she was warm don't get me wrong you know I've been using it um, but it was still on on one battery the one battery that I had in the machine towards the end of the uh, the last little bit of cutting unfortunately she decided that's enough no more I would have thought that if it was a temperature related thing that the machine would shut itself down for self-protection but it didn't I think it went too hot but let's see so we got all the screws loose and let's shake it all apart a few stubborn ones as always and there we go in all its glory 
So that's what the inside of a uh, universal saw looks like. This is the actual mechanism that um, gives you that forward backwards motion. And this tiny little thingy there is the electric motor. While I'm talking to you now, um, I'm um, <laughs> smelling the smells. Having a look at the clamshell as we like to do. Um, you can see there is some rubber bits stuck to the inside of it for vibration reasons. Uh, quite a few actually. Uh, some are nicer than others. I mean, this looks a little bit funky. The actual description is here. Let's see if we can get that on camera by zooming in a bit. Whoop! PA6 with 30% glass fiber reinforcement and a TPE overmolding as per the norm. The overmolding, the black stuff as you can see, the TPE nicely integrated into the base plastic of the tool, the housing of the tool, or the clam as they call it, clamshell, because it clams around the tool from both sides. I was about to say nice and stiff, but it isn't. It's got quite a bit of flex to it. But then again, you, you don't really, you only ever use it in that direction. Oh dear. The actual uh, rubber dampers come loose, so they're just stuck in place there. Yeah, besides the dirt, you can see a little bit of uh, grease from the actual mechanism that runs in and out there. That's uh, rubbed off a little bit. Um, working end of the machine is where the overmolding is. Um, it's quite firmly integrated on this surface and on this surface, but not so much on this edge. So it's it's therefore peeling off quite easily. So I think as an improvement point, but I guess this saw has now been superseded by the brushless version. They probably wanted that injection point close to the edge, but then I guess they couldn't because of the way that they had to shape the actual opening. So yeah, let's put that to one side. Then on the inside of the tool, the, as per the norm, the usual very firm and sturdy battery connectors. Nickel plated, nicely done. Soldered connectors. No heat shrink or anything, so this is a slightly older design. So, as you've seen in, in the video of the circular saw, for instance, they've, they've done a nice job. They've, they've improved on the the tool build quality over the years. This is a, a tool that's been, I think this was one of the earlier power exchange um, tools available. I mean, this was manufactured in July 2020. This was one of the earlier members of the power exchange family. The wires are a little bit crushed. They're good quality wires. They got the markings on them. Um, so that's all good. A beefy, oh dear, it's all a bit dusty. This is a different switch than what we're used to. All right, let's have a look. Jinyuan switch, which is a different brand to what we've seen in the in the other tools. For instance, the impact driver, which all use J-level switches, which I think is for the newer tools a, a variation of switch that Einhal decided to. Um, go towards, I guess, because it's also a, a tooth approved switch. So it's got all the um, safety uh, markings and classifications and certifications and whatever else you need these days for all sorts of reasons. Then the um, two way operational um, safety switch, so which sits above the actual trigger, um, like so, and the trigger lives just below it down here and the uh, it's got a little spring in it so it always centers and this little peg lives in between there and there so basically if you hold on the side so that basically stops you from pressing it so you have to physically push it one way or the other before you can then use the trigger it's sort of crushed into there quite a lot of wiring for no good measure and then they squeeze it all in there um, this is actually heat shrink together, so this is um, two different wires. I guess this comes as part of the switch assembly, and then this is part of the motor assembly. Let's have a look at the red one, there we go. So you can see the motor assembly probably comes with these two wires, and then in the 
factory where they assemble the whole saw they then put the two ends together and put a bit of heat shrink over it but quite a lot of excess wires for no good reason let's have a look at the oh dear oh dear look at that banana so the rattles that we heard inside the saw are the screws that have completely shaken apart. So as we have a look in here, the whole mechanism has come adrift. So the whole thing, this cover plate is completely loose. All these screws, as you can see, they're all loose. So mm, could that be an assembly fault or is that as in they haven't torqued them up properly or is that a weak point of the saw but yeah this is basically a mechanism which is now obviously full of sawdust and other unwanted items in there because there should only be a nice bit of grease in there um, which is now completely ruined because this thing is just flapping about when the um, um, the saw is actually moving backwards and forwards and then as you can see the clam is nicely covered with sawdust because that's what we've been cutting lots and lots of wood there we go I'll let's zoom out a little bit so yeah the clam shell on the other side of the tool is very much identical uh, you can see a little bit of blackening there where the motor has chewed its last little um, song Again, there's a bit of grease which I guess has come out of here because the lid has opened itself up because the two screws decided to depart from the occasion. And I mean, these screws are no longer, um, yeah, usable. <laughs> They're as bent as a banana. So let's put the two clams together as we like to do traditionally to have a quick look and see how stiff the clam is. It fits okay. A little bit of gap. Uh, down there where the um, trigger switch normally lives um, so yeah, if you squeeze it together there's a little bit of play but nothing too significant so I think again clamshells that Einhell makes are of a good quality there is nothing wrong with this I said the only criticism I have is that the over molding here wears off rather quickly I said this is a six month old saw Right, having a look at the internals of this uh, very analog source, it only goes one direction, as in the saw actually just makes that motion. Brushed motor, which is uh, crispy at this point, in a knackered old transmission housing, if you like, with the screws all loose, so that's going to be nice and easy for us to get into. So, uh, yeah, let's do that, shall we? All these screws are absolutely knackered. They're all bent like a banana. Yeah, this was supposed to be grease, which is now a mixture of sawdust and grease, which is why it's a bit black, as it's got a bit hot, uh, which turns round and then the saw moves forwards. And this, this little bearing housing is basically what allows the saw... I'm trying to move it, but... Oh, there you go. So that's basically what the movement of the saw is. It goes that way and then... So it's a very simple, it's a very similar design to the, the engine in your car. So let's take the bearing housing cap off. So these are Torx properly. Now I promise you this saw has not been apart. This is literally out of the box and I start using it. I didn't mess with this. So this is um, a genuine failure of the tool. And as you can see, this is what the screws should look like, and this is what they are after you end up having them rattling around inside a saw for a bit. So this is a little bearing housing, nice die-cast aluminium housing, no markings in it and such, apart from the dust. A little bit of wear marks there where the, the bearing has, has been moving around a little bit, it's got a little bit of play on it.
yeah not very hard as you can see you can just file um, file away at this so this is not a very hard material um, I bet you the little bearing is oh yes having a look at the actual bearing uh, it's a nice substantial bearing there's no markings of a manufacturer on there uh, there's just a part number there a 6002 Z it's not shielded which is why there's grease but then again it doesn't need to be because it's fully enclosed when the motor is in place so yeah the mechanism locking mechanism very simple a little spring that basically slots into one of the openings in the arm it's a Mabuchi motor so it's a good quality motor or at least you think but I guess because the assembly came apart the resistance for the motor became too much because there were screws flying around in the mechanism so summary of the Einhell brushed universal saw clamshells as per the norm they haven't got the Einhell markings in them as we've seen with more of the recent tools so we can't 100% confirm this was a fully engineered um, by Einhell themselves or if this was third party done as I said the newer tools they have the ISC uh, logo in, in printed into the tool so that you can see it's an Einhell owned uh, design as such um, the electrics very simple battery terminal switch a good quality motor actually this is a Mabuchi motor Japanese brand a bit of excess on the wiring uh, very simple like I said the motor comes with two wires they solder the battery terminal switch assembly onto it heat shrink it and just um, stuff the excess wires into wherever there's space for it an unusual switch for Einel as far as we've seen the other tools they all use J-level switches with tuff markings etc a Yin Yuan switch which if I pronounce that correctly probably not uh, different brand, little heat sink on it. But yeah, other than that, it's all right. Solid switch feels good in the hand, you know. And the usual solid terminals, nickel plated. Yeah. Then we move on to the mechanical side of things. The thing that we found is that the screws for the assembly here. Whoops. They've came out and turned themselves into little bananas as they got mangled up in the moving parts of the machine. Um, as in when, when, when this was, uh, was doing this thing. So uh, yeah, this was um, mangling the screws up quite nicely. Um, so I think that was either a manufacturing mistake, as in the screws weren't talked up properly or as a result of vibrations the screws have come undone so that might have been so we'll have to get in touch with the warranty department and say hmm this is what we discovered not so pretty the mechanical bits this isn't the actual um, arm whatever the proper name for it would be isn't hardened steel uh, the ball is as well as the bearing that could be an improvement point so this will be the one that will, this will be the part that wears out eventually um, other than that the only other issue that I had with the tool is that the lock and unlock mechanism for the slider bit um, is right where you would put your other hands when you use the saw during operations so you by accident sometimes press onto the switch because I always hold it like this so you attend with your palm by accident pressing the unlock switch which means uh, this thing shakes loose and comes out and makes a horrible rattling noise you know pretty quickly what's happening but yeah the first time thing it was gone wrong with my saw so that could be a point of improvement for the future so I put the motor into the vise and I hooked it up to the, the battery, so the battery terminal, plus on the plus, obviously. And then uh, I'll just give it a little chooch with the, with the button.
She's dead again. She's dead again. So I think the banana screws have um, have done that damage. It's uh intermittently working i guess when you put some load on it she'll be dead before uh, before long because the motor keeps cutting out even at idle so yeah it's uh time for an upgrade i think i think i'm gonna go for the brushless version next thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video apologies for having uh, two einhell videos in a row but because it was smoking the other day i thought hmm it was a bit unplanned, but I didn't want to withhold you the information to see what was wrong with the saw. But yeah, give it a thumbs up if you think this is good stuff. Press the subscribe button if not already done. And then we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself.